right, so we just finished looking at the do now. And what we see inside this picture is clothes, right? So the image, the question was, what do you see in this image? And you guys hit it right on the nail, right? So you see a king, you see him in a pool of water. So it is him getting baptized. And like some of you guys actually said, him getting baptized means he is a Christian, right? So what we're actually going to be learning about today is, and this is where you guys should have your sheets of papers out handy, ready to go, ready to take notes, locked and loaded. Don't copy everything you see on the slide. So, we're going to talk about the decline in the Rome. At the beginning of the year, we talked about the Roman Empire. We talked about it being this huge place. All right? And then we talked about it splitting in half, in two. I gave you guys this scenario. So, imagine this. You are a good parent. You have two kids. You have one cookie. What do you do for the kids? They both want their cookie. What do you do? Cut it in half. half. Correct. Somebody said cut it, split it. I said cut it in half. You said cut it in half, right? That was a good parent. Some of my other classes were like, nah, I'm going to eat it. Nah, I'm going to get it. My favorite child one, right? But what happened was the Roman Empire split directly in half, right? We learned that to the right, that became this big empire. We talked about them a lot. It started with a B. The Byzantine Empire. They were the Roman Empire that actually went on to be successful. The one that kept flourishing, right? And then we talked about the ones to the left, which was where the original Rome was, the western part of the Roman Empire. We learned that what happened to them? They failed. They failed, right? So today, when we talk about the decline of the Roman Empire, we're not talking about the decline of the Byzantine Empire, which we already talked about, right? When the Ottoman Turks came in and conquered them, right? We are going to be talking about the decline of the old Roman Empire, or the western Roman Empire, right? So. Important things to know when we talk about decline, right? Do not write everything down on your paper. We'll do notes for the first slide together. So, when you look up here, right, it says the Germanic people. What I want you guys to think about when you think about Germanic people, think about tribes. Think about gangs. Is there anybody who do not know what a tribe is? Everybody know what a gang is, right? And gangs or tribes, they fight over what? Territory, right? So you got Europe, this big blank piece of land, right? So you have these Germanic tribes that moved there in the third century. Very important to note, Germanic tribes, they moved there in what century? What century? AD. What century? So you got the Germanic tribe that actually moved there in the third century. I'm gonna be with me. All right, so here's what's important. First note that I want you guys to actually take. Germanic tribes moved to Rome, third century. And I want you guys to connect that with the bottom one. So they moved there in the third century, but in year 500, Germanic people had settled everywhere throughout Europe. So connect those two. They moved there in the third century, so Germanic tribes moved there in the third century, By the year 500, it was everywhere. Germanic. When you guys think about the word Germanic, what country comes to mind? Germany. Germany. I'm going to use you, Jason, as an example so I can paint a picture of this. Right? Jason, you live at home, you got a big, beautiful house, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have a cousin. Oh, Jason, I'm your cousin hard times. Can I come move with you? So yes. Okay, so Jason, thank you for saying yes, but I forgot to tell you that my baby mama was coming and her other child that she had from a previous relationship was also coming. So we all moving in now, right? So we're all with you now. Thank you. Don't go look at the refrigerator because we already ate the milk and the cereal that you already had there, right? Oh, you want to take a shower? But wait, we have to take a shower first. You only have two showers, so I'm going to be in this shower. My baby mama's going to be in that shower, right? So I just want to paint that picture of the concept, right? People moved in, and then they start taking over, right? So Europe, Roman Empire, a whole bunch of Romans. Now you got a whole bunch of Germanic people. They come and just invade them. They take it over like wildfire. They come and use all the resources. They come and eat. They come and to any type of resource that you have before, you are now splitting those resources with the people that's coming over. You wanted to, sure, go ahead. So they 
just start coming in the third century, and the fifth century is when it was everywhere, right? So, another thing I want to paint a picture of, the second reason that you should put in your notes that on their downfall is Rome, they hired outside clans to protect them. So Rome hired outside clans to protect them. Now I want you guys to think about this. I probably said this before. Let's say our president, who's our commander in chief, let's theoretically say it is Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. Next one, right? Why do you laugh? I'm just saying, this is a theoretical possibility that could happen. Um, Donald Trump one day gets in an argument with somebody, somebody in Russia or North Korea. He picks up the phone and he says, Look, send that missile, right? So we're going to war now, right? So who did he get to fight that war? Soldiers, which are part of the what? Army. So the U.S. Army is what he's going to use to actually go fight a war to protect us, right? Just because he's mad and he got on the phone, right? That's what he's going to use to actually go and protect us. So imagine this. He's using our army, our homegrown army. Imagine he's like, you know what? I don't feel like using an army. Um, I seen these boys over here can fight. I went to a homestead Broncos football game and I seen the JROTC. They came out on the field. They had their guns all lined up. They had the flags in the right direction. Their suits were well pressed. Why don't we send them out there to fight for the country? What do you think, y'all? What do y'all think will happen there? They're not trained. What you mean they're not trained? I mean, like, they haven't really, like, shot their guns. They really, what, what, it's a gun, no? Yeah, but what they so, people. Before, like, people, people, people are going to get mad. Huh? Like, people are going to get mad. People are going to get mad because of what? Because, like, you're just sending anybody out there. So you're just sending anybody out yeah, there. You're not sending exactly. your troops that you actually trained, that went through basic training. You're not sending those out there to fight for you, right? Yeah. So the second bullet point, it says Rome hired European clans to protect its European borders, right? So these were a whole bunch of different tribes that they hired. They weren't hiring Romans. It wasn't the Spartans that you've seen in the movie 300. They wasn't the ones out there fighting for Rome. It's a whole bunch of other clans, right? So, one other thing that I want you guys to think about is my knee. Mula moves everything around me. That is very true still to this day. So, your parents, they go to work. They get what? My knee. My knee. The government, they necessarily don't go to work, but they still can let, get money. How do they get money? Taxes. Taxes. So they collect taxes. So when you guys grow old enough in two years from now to actually work, whether it be at Win Dixie, Publix, maybe some of y'all just start right in the White House, right? But then I won't be down here at Homestead. I'm gonna cry, right? But all I'm really trying to say is when you see your first paycheck, you're gonna be like, what the heck? Taxes, income tax, federal tax coming out my check. I work 10 hours. Why don't I got 10 times whatever the dollar amount is? Why is they taking sixty dollars from me? What's this? Taxes. It's gonna be a reality that soon you guys will actually see. So now, what happened when you raised tax? So your mom, she's the one at home, or your dad, or your family, your parents. Rather say they're the one at home that paid the bill. What happened when they raised taxes? How do your parents feel? They get mad. They get mad. So what happened when they raised the price of school lunch? How y'all about the, the price of a pizza? What happened to you? We're not gonna eat pizza no more. Y'all not gonna eat pizza no more. You're going to be eating Roman noodles instead, right? Because that's still affordable, right? But taxes, yeah. So the Romans, they had raised taxes. When they raised taxes, it angered some of the people in Europe, some of the clans that were protecting them. And since it angered them, that started to their own demise. So instead of writing everything down that you see here, let's go over what you should have. So first thing you should have is that Germanic tribes moved into the Roman Empire in the third century. By the year 500, they was everywhere. All right, so by the year 500, they was everywhere inside the empire, right? Second thing that led to their demise was the fact that The second thing that led to their demise was the fact that they weren't protecting their own borders anymore. They 
hiring Homestead JROTC. Or in real life, they hire other tribes to protect their borders. Last but not least, they raise taxes. And that just twisted the people the wrong way on the inside. When they raise taxes, it was like, uh-huh, you ain't gonna raise that on me. You want me to support you and you raise your taxes? Uh-huh, ain't gonna work like that. So that's pretty much different factors or facets that actually led to the decline of Rome. So we talk about these different tribes. Let's actually visualize these different tribes. So I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the names of the different tribes, their locations. I'll show you on a map after. So you have the Visigoths from Spain and South France. You have the Franks, which sounds like what? What country does that sound like? France, France right? Then you have the Ostrogoths from Southeast Europe. You have the Slavs and the Huns in Eastern Europe. You have the Burgundies in the South, the Anglo-Saxons in England, the Vandals in Northern America, the Basques in Northern Spain, right? So the Anglo-Saxons, we actually heard about these people before. Who were the first people in America? Indians, Native Americans. So the correct term is Native American. Mm -hmm. Mr. Columbus came here, he seen people, he thought it was India, so he called them Indians, right? So the first people that were here were Native Americans, right? We understand that, right? So, pilgrims, people came over here for religion, religious reasons, right? They left what country? Europe was the continent. Britain, which is also called England. So they left England. So the people that originally left England were Anglo-Saxons. America, you had Native Americans, then you had your Anglo-Saxons that were inside of America. So just so you guys can actually visualize it on the map, what does it actually look like? So in this part of the map, I just need a volunteer. You got it. Can you point to, remember I told you we did the cookie where it split right in half. Can you point to on the map, anywhere you want to, all you got to do is press this red button right here. Can you point to the side that stayed prosperous, the Byzantine Empire on the map? Make us look good, we're counting on you. And what made you look over there? Constantinople, smart guy. So he looked there at Constantinople because we learned that when it split in half, the dude that took over the right side of the empire was called Constantine. He put his capital of his new Byzantine empire in Constantinople. Then we learned that the side that we just talked about that actually was still declining was this side of Europe, the left side, the original side where Rome was originally, right? And then you have these whole bunch of tribes. We learned earlier that gangs, they fight for what, Emmanuel? So they're fighting for territory. Right? So, if you look on the map, you see all these different colors? Yeah. A whole bunch of different territories, like different gangs, tribes, <laughs> clans, <laughs> right? So, the most important ones that I do want you guys to highlight, because we're going to talk about them over and over again, is one, the Visigoths. Write that down. Number two. Anglo-Saxons. And the third but not least, not least, is the Franks. Anglo-Saxons. You can't see it? No. no. Can you see it now? Yeah. Does it go? Franks. Does it go? Franks, Anglo-Saxons. It's very important to understand that Anglo-Saxons came from England. You said Franks? Franks. Like ballpark Franks? That's mm -hmm. where you get the name from. French fries? They came from France. That's so where you get the name from. French fries. French, yes. French dressing. French tip. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else French that I'm missing? French names. Uh -huh. Can you give me a French name? All right, all right, moving along. Right, so what we're gonna do now, everybody, when you came inside the room today, you should have had a worksheet on your desk. I want you guys to flip over to the side that says Anglo-Saxons, arrival in England. We are gonna watch a quick flip, which is six minutes. 
We're going to watch a quick clip, which is six minutes.